Learning After Effects is all about practicing a lot. Today you learn two cool effects that will help you understand After Effects even more. Oh, and if you want the project files to follow along, click the link down below. The first effect we're doing is the isometric look. Yep, that beautiful angled fake 3D design style that instantly makes everything look clean and professional. Okay, let's start by creating a new composition. And in that comp, drop in a background. You can just use a solid layer with a nice gradient ramp on it. Something soft. Next, we need some assets. These can be literally anything. Icons, shapes, your logo. And for this example, I'm just using a few simple shape layers to keep it clean. All right, now we're going 3D. So first, let's create a camera. Go to Layer, then to New and choose Camera. In the new pop-up window, we are setting the focal length to 50 millimeters. That's a nice and neutral focal length. Click on OK. Now, with the camera selected, go into the Transform properties. In the Zoom setting, type in 10,000. And then for Position, we're going to move it back to the Z axis. So just type minus 10,000 in the Z position. Now let's make all our shape layers. 3D. Just hit the little 3D cube checkbox for each layer. If you can't find that column, just toggle the switches at the bottom until you see it. Next step, creating a null object. Again, we will go to layer, to new, and this time we choose null object. This is gonna help us control the camera more easily. With our fresh null object, we're parenting the camera to the null using the pick whip tool. And yes, let's make the null 3D as well. Now let's go into the null's properties and look for transform, and then the orientation settings. Set the values to 45, 35 and 30. And just like that, your whole scene now has this beautiful isometric perspective. From here, you can keep stacking more layers and assets. Just make them a 3D layer and everything will automatically conform to that isometric view. And now you can go nuts. Animate everything. I really like this look and honestly, it's way easier to set up than most people think. Now, before we get to the second effect, I want to show you my favorite After Effects plug. This is Storyblocks. I can simply search for footage or After Effects template I need, click the down button and boom, it will appear in your project panel. No need to leave After Effects. Unlimited downloads of diverse and high quality media for one predictable subscription cost. Storyblocks has everything you need in one place. 4K and HD video, templates, music and sound effects. It's like an unlimited source of content and you guys get the freedom to test, experiment and create more effective videos. I use it all the time to test new effects for tutorials like this or to enhance the story I'm telling you guys. You can choose a monthly or annual plan, no hidden costs or extra fees. Now, this is important to know. The stock library is constantly being refreshed with new content that feels authentic. And it's created by real artists, not by an AI. Anything you download is 100% royalty free, pre-licensed and ready to use. No need to worry about legal rights or copyright claims. Now, to get three months for free when you sign up for the annual plan, go to starblocks.com slash After Effects Basics. Or of course, just click the link down below. It's time for effect number two, and this one pairs perfectly with the first. It's that shiny futuristic 3D glass UI look. You know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like an interface designed by Apple. Now, however, for this effect to work, you need a background. Everything works, even a subtle one. Let's again start with a new composition. By now, you already know the steps. So let's immediately grab the pen tool and draw a simple line. Give it a thick stroke so we can see it clearly. In the shape layer properties, set the cap to round so we don't have those ugly sharp edges. We want everything to feel soft and clean. Now we want this line to animate open. So go to the layer properties, click on the add menu and select trim pads. This is an effect to easily animate lines. Inside trim pads, animate the start and end properties to make the line draw itself. We're gonna let the start and end begin at 50% and for one we go to 10 and for the other to 90, which will open up the line. Okay, now very important, we need to make this animation smooth and bouncy and for that we're gonna use one of our favorite free plugins, Motion Tools from Motion Design School. If you don't have it, go grab it, it's free. Link down below. Once it's installed, just select the property you want to add a bounce to. Press a button and boom, it's bouncy. But let's take it a step further. Animate the stroke width too, so it starts thin and grows thicker. And of course, bounce that as well. And look at that, it looks a little bit liquid-like. Time for the glass look. Duplicate your line layer and rename the bottom one to something like this place map. We first make the fill color black and then we can disable it for now. Back on the top shape layer, we're gonna enable the adjustment layer toggle button by clicking this little icon right here. Then we'll start stacking our effects. The first one is fast 
Advanced Box Blur. Set the radius to something soft like 7. Next, the tint effect and here we set both color properties to white. Then lower the amount to around 20%. We're going for frosted glass, not paint. Next up, VR Chromatic Aberration. You can leave the settings as they are, we just want a little bit of color distortion. Finally, add the displacement map effect. For this to work, we need a map layer. That's where our disabled duplicates comes in. So let's enable the duplicate and add a layer style, the inner glow. For the settings of the glow, we make it small, soft and white, just enough to give us enough information to use a distortion. When you're done, you can again disable the layer. Now back on our displacement map, set both the horizontal and vertical displacement to luminance. Set the map layer to the one we just modified. Crank up the values a bit until you get a subtle warp. And just like that, you've got a 3D like distortion. Let's polish it up even more. Duplicate the map layer, enable it and rename it to Highlight. Set the blending mode to screen, lower the opacity a bit and adjust the inner glow to be really thin. Now for the final touch, duplicate the highlight layer and add a CC light sweep effect. Play with the settings until you've got a nice shimmer across the glass. You can even keyframe the direction to animate the light moving across the shape. You can repeat this process for more shapes, add your UI text layers, make it isometric and suddenly you've got yourself a 3D holograph control panel straight out of an Apple commercial. Now if you like these effects check out the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching.